Hello everyone, I'm Sybil Starr and I'm here to give the astrology forecast for the Cancer New Moon. This is a very wonderful new moon because this is in direct alignment with the star Sirius. And we're going to be learning tonight just a little bit more about Sirius and the Syrian star nation and how they have inter how they interact with uh, Mother Earth and the energy of what is happening right now because there are uh, masters of Sirius now in our field helping us, as well as our dear mother, great mother Isis. So anyway, let us begin. I've made a little uh, PowerPoint that I think you might find helpful. I'm not going to do it for all of my videos, but I felt like since this was a really special one with the with our connection with Sirius, that I wanted to do something just a little special and a little different. All right, so let us begin with this PowerPoint. All right, here we go. Here we are. All right, so just bring me down here. All right, so today, so this is the Cancer New Moon. We're going to first just talk about the actual new moon. So here is the chart. It occurs at 3.58 p.m., on July 5th here uh, in Santa Rosa, which is Pacific time. So what we've got going on here is we've got, of course, the sun and the moon here at 14 degrees, 23 minutes of Cancer. The star Sirius is at 14 degrees, 24 minutes. So it's just one minute off. And yes, in case you're wondering, the star behind me is an image of Sirius. So I'm really hoping to be channeling, channeling in some information from Sirius and from Isis, the Great Mother. Anyway, so we've got the sun and the moon here at 14 degrees of Cancer. It is a conjunct Venus, kind of wide, but it is there. There are so many configurations in this chart. I don't know that I've ever seen one that has so many different geometric patterns. And I find that so interesting, of course, because that's what the Syrians are known for, a six-dimensional, they're a six-dimensional uh, civilization. And one of the things that they are known for is how to work with sacred geometry. So to begin with, we're going to start with, um, first off, I think I'm going to do this. We've got five planets in water. We've got the sun, the moon, Venus, <clears throat> Neptune, Neptune, and a Saturn. Let me get some water. And so <clears throat> water, of course, is about flow. It's about emotion and a time of deep feeling. Um then we, like I said, we have uh, several different geometric patterns. Um, the first one that you can see here, I'm going to try to show it to you. We've got lots of trines. Everything is trine and trine is so much about flow. And we've got this triangle here. Okay. And this triangle is in um, water signs. And this is all in water signs. Okay. And then the other triangle we have is, oh, let me just point it out. We've got the sun, the moon, and Venus, trine Pallas Athena, trine Saturn, okay? The second triangle we have here is, and we've got Ceres, which is another one of the great mother Im images or archetypes. She's opposite the uh, sun and moon here in Cancer. And Ceres is trine Mars in Taurus. And then it's trine Juno in Virgo. Okay, so we've got this Star of David. There's many, many trines. Um, we also have what's called a kite because each one of these trines has an opposition to it. And that is like a, an outlet. So sometimes a trine is a closed uh, it's closed energy. But when there's an outlet, it gives a way to express it. So, uh, like I said, the sun is opposite Sirius, um, and then we have Saturn opposite um, Juno and Mars opposite Pallas Athena. It's really complex. So, you know, I don't expect you to remember them. this. I'm going to go over it a little more of what the meaning is. We also have what's called a grand sextile. 
all of these are sextile. They don't show it here, but um, Ceres is sextile Saturn. Saturn is sextile Mars. Mars is sextile the sun. The sun is sextile uh, Juno. Juno is sextile Pallas Athena, and then back to Ceres here. I guess I should have started with the sun and moon. Anyway, sextiles bring opportunities, okay? And then one more thing, we have what is called a mystical rectangle. And we've got, so we've got her, it looks like an envelope. We've got Saturn, which is sextile Mars. And you come over here, it's trine. Um, Juno, it comes up, it's, uh, where are we at here? Uh, sextile Pallas Athena and then back to Saturn. So you don't really need to remember any of that. It's just that there's many uh, aspects and, and what a, a mystical rectangle is because a combination of trying sextiles and oppositions, this aspect pattern encourages us to embrace both our strengths and weaknesses, guiding us towards personal growth and transformation. All right. So the first thing we're going to talk about here is the is cancer, because we do have three planets in cancer, the sun, the moon and Venus. And cancer is the first water sign. It's associated with the divine mother as well as the human mother. It's the archetype of the mother. It's nurturing, healing. Uh, a lot of healers have uh, energy in cancer. It represents the unconditional love of the mother. Whenever I see cancer showing up in someone's chart, I know that it is about affairs of the heart. Okay. It represents family, clan, tribe, and all domestic affairs, uh, home, home and family. Uh, cancer is very sensitive as well as imaginative. And it's ruled by the moon. And the moon in astrology represents the emotional body. And they say that it is in the emotional body that all of the memories of the soul are encapsulated in emotional form. And people with cancer energy are often have, um, are, are often can be very good like fiction writers because they say it is these memories of the soul that are arising. Uh, and many right now at this point in time are having memories, soul memories coming up of Atlantis, Lemuria, Egypt, different past lives in different places. It's like as we are getting ready to make this shift, these soul memories are coming up to either be healed or to remember the gifts we had or both. Okay. Uh, the ancient symbol, uh, and we may have other memories show up just to know that, you know, in this cancer new moon that, um, you may have memories show up. Um, it, the ancient symbol for cancer is the turtle. And just like the turtle has the soft inner shell or excuse me, the soft inner part, but the harder shell, it's like, Cancer, those with cancer energy is, it is having a very soft heart, but there's often a need to really protect it. And so what, it can be very defensive, okay? As they build these strong defenses like the turtle. And when, a, and cancer is known to withdraw when they are hurt to go inside of that shell. But the hope is, of course, is to spend as much time outside of that shell as possible because the world really needs the love that cancer carries. Cancer really rules the emotional heart. The moon really rules the emotional heart. Um, one of the uh, shadows of cancer is to be very subjective because everything has to go within before it can be expressed without with cancer. And so one of the teachings is to take nothing personally that uh, like Don McGill Ruiz says, nothing others do is because of you. It's because of their own, whatever is going on with them. And it's really important to step back and be able to look at that. Uh, cancer is known to hide behind the role of the mother. Like I said, it's the archetype of the mother, but it's often easier to meet someone else's needs than to get our own needs met. And also it's easy to love our family, but cancer says love must start with ourselves first or, and if we don't, we can become very codependent, but the key is, 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 is love and love starts with ourselves. Uh, another shadow is that it can be very clannish. 
We must love not only our family, but the family of humanity. All right, now let's go to the next slide. Okay, so here we have, uh, maybe I'll put myself up here. All right, so over here we have the star Sirius. Here is Sirius. Uh, Sirius is the brightest star in the sky. It's sometimes mistaken for a planet. It's so bright. And like I said, the sun um, at this new moon is one minute off. Sirius is located at 14 degrees, 14 degrees, 24 minutes of Cancer. And this new moon is at 14 degrees, 23 minutes. So there's a very strong connection with of, of Sirius right now. Um, and I wanted to also uh, show you where Sirius is located in the sky. So if, if you can find Orion, okay, and those three stars in the belt of Orion, look down to the left and that very bright star is Sirius. And both Sirius and uh, Orion by the Egyptians was considered to be uh, Osiris, whereas Sirius was uh, said to believe the celestial form of the great mother Isis. Okay, and that's who I have right here is Isis. But first, let me just finish up about Sirius. Um, Sirius is known to be our spiritual son. And some believe that we are actually in an orbital pattern with Sirius. Some off-planet beings say that, let's put it this way, there are scientists here that believe that to be true, but there's also um, off-planet beings who say that when they look at the sky and our solar system, they see us in an orbital pattern with Sirius. Um, of course, Sirius is, uh, like I said, the celestial form of Isis, according to the Egyptians, and it's the divine mother. And so it would make sense that um, Sirius would be the mother star and our son, S-U-N slash S-O-N, would be her son. And in Egyptian mythology, Horus was her son, and Horus is the light of the sun in in Egyptian cosmology, that's who Horus is, okay? So it's the light of the sun. And so uh, uh, Isis is, the, uh, like I said, the divine mother. She's one of the faces of the divine mother. She is worshiped all over the Mediterranean. There was worshiped all over the Mediterranean. And at the heart of Isis mythology lies her mas mastery of magic is a potent force that transcends mortal limitations and bridges the gap between the earthly realm and the divine realm. Through her knowledge of sacred incantations, spells, and rituals, Isis wielded the power to heal the sick, resurrect the dead, and protect the faithful from harm. Isis used her magic with compassion and purpose, embodying the divine principle of Ma'at, which is harmony, balance, and justice. And I wanna share just a little uh, event that I had. Of course, I wanted, this is, this is Isis and Horus. She was the original Madonna. She uh, came long before uh, Mother Mary and Jesus. She was the original Madonna. But anyway, and just speaking of that, when I was in Egypt, I uh, went to this church. It was a very, very old Catholic church church. I think they said it was around from like maybe 500 BC. I can't, not BC, uh, 500 AD. I'm not sure it was that old, but it was pretty old. Uh, it was 12 to 1500 years old. Anyway, I was kind of like reluctant to go in the church because just kind of, of my old, you know, uh, stuff that I was still carrying around about the Catholic church. And this was, you know, this was a while ago. Anyway, when I went into the church, I went up to, it was, um, what is it? I think they call it a novena station. And it was this very ancient picture of Mother Mary, of the Madonna holding the baby Jesus. It was very old. I think they said it might've been 1200 years old, the actual painting. And uh, was lighting a candle. Uh, I was lighting candles, praying for people as I stood there. <clears throat> and all of a sudden, just out of this picture of Mother Mary, came this image of, of Isis. And she said to me, um, 
I have, I have always been here. I have never left and I wear many faces. And so it was felt like it was a really powerful moment as she was sharing with me that she and Mar mother Mary are the same one. There's the same energy of the divine mother. Anyway, uh, and so I think it's just important to remember that we are always held in the loving arms of the Divine Mother and that we are never alone. All right. All right. So this is uh, three important dates in relation to Sirius. So the first one is the sun in alignment with Sirius. And this year it's on July 5th. It kind of bounces around between the 5th and the 6th. And this, when the sun is in direct alignment with Sirius, uh, but it is within range several days before and after. Sirius is at 14 degrees, 24 minutes of Cancer. Oh, I have there in 2023. It's actually 2024. <laughs> All right. Uh, the light of Sirius pours through our sun and is then dispersed through our solar system. It's a very powerful time to connect with the Sirius energy. Uh, this would be a time to go out and pray and um, yeah, call in the serious energy. And it's really important to realize that the sun in the chart of the United States on July 4th in 1776 at 13 degrees of cancer is in alignment with Sirius. And this was intentional. Our founders were Freemasons and this date was chosen due to the alignment with Sirius. The U United States is under the protection of Isis Sirius and Washington DC has much Egyptian and Greek iconography on buildings and statues. So that's the first important date. The second important date is called the Heliacal Rising of Sirius. And this happens between July 28th and August 12th, but it's really uh, the celebrations start on July, on around July 28th. And this is when the sun, the uh, Sirius rises before the sun after being hidden for around 70 days due to the light of the sun. And in, in, uh, 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 until the Aswan Dam was built, the flooding of the Nile would occur soon after this rising. And it was the uh, considered the Egyptian New Year. The third important date is the Lion's Gate. It happens on August 8th every year. Um, and here's an image here, the lion's gate. Of course, here's an image of Egypt, okay? Uh, the sun and Sirius, this is when the sun and Sirius are closest to the earth. The lion's gate, eight, eight portal, is the opening of a galactic gate that delivers high frequency energy into our beings, allowing us to rebirth our spirit energy and the spirit energy of Mother Earth. Yeah, so the earth has a very strong, uh, our solar system, uh, and the earth as well has a very strong relationship with uh, Sirius. Right. So the next thing we're going to talk about are the Sirius mystery schools. Okay. Um, this is very powerful. I can see this isn't a very good image here. I um, might have to get a different one uh, of the flower of life. But the Sirius mystery schools, the Sirius uh, are more advanced in the metaphysical sense as Sirius is home to one of the most advanced training centers or universities. And it is known as the mystery schools. Many ascended masters travel here to study and teach. Sirius is a star system, which is a meeting place for beings of this galaxy who wish to continue their spiritual studies. The Syrians also brought these mystery schools to earth in Egypt, India, and other places as well. The uh, Egyptian pantheon came from Atlantis, but were Syrian in origin. Uh, Matthias de Stefano speaks of the Sophir as a serpent race from Sirius, one of the original races on earth. Now the book Stellar Family Soul, uh, excuse me, Stellar Nation Soul Families have um, uh, the soul families um, and they have a couple of soul families that they say uh, come from Sirius. And both of these are, re are related to the mystery schools. Uh, 
The first one there is called the Serpent Mystery Schools. And like I said, the, uh, the Sirius is very related to serpent energy on many levels. So the first is the male serpents. They say that this is what they call the stellar home of these schools it is the, um, the, uh, the male serpent and the female serpent uh, mystery schools. So the first, the male serpent mystery schools, it's a teaching school of cosmic wisdom and consciousness like this uh, right here. Okay. Um, this symbol just really reminded me of the serpent mystery schools. Um, things like the tree of life, sacred geometry, astrology, magic, and the death and resurrection ceremonies uh, uh, that they would have in Egypt, you know, where they were, uh, um, an initiate would go into a sarcophagus and stay there for like three days. And during that time, they would astral travel to Sirius and then come back with information. But these were the schools of cosmic wisdom where they allowed um, people to grow their consciousness to be able to do these kinds of things. The second school was the female serpent school. And this had to do with the Kundalini, healing, magic, oracle and assisted the the dying okay so you can see here this is a symbol of the kundalini the serpent energy the life force the shakti rising up the spine and bringing enlightenment here with the lotus okay uh it is said that there that uh in the uh, uh, stellar nation soul families they it is they say and it really makes sense to me and their channeled teachings that whenever a new dream is conceived in the collective consciousness of earthly humanity, it is the Syrian masters who answer the call to help us create that dream. And they use sacred geometry. And one of the patterns they use here is the flower of life. Like I said, this is not a great image. I'm going to maybe get a different one, but you can see it's... Um, it's uh, the flower of life is composed of 19 circles that intersect each other at the center to form an intricate floral pattern. In sacred geometry, the flower of life is one of the building blocks of creation. And to the believers of sacred geometry, the flower of life represents the interconnectedness of all things in the universe and the cycle of life and the union between masculine and feminine. Because as you can see here, there are circles and there are some lines, okay? Combination of circles and lines, all right. And the symbol of the flower of life is found in sites all over the world. The oldest being known is in the Osirian in Abydos in Egypt, which some say is over 10,000 years old, while others say it may be as old as 30,000 years old, okay, and came actually before the Egyptians, that this is actually an Atlantean symbol. All right. Now, the Sirius star nation. So they are what I am, my understanding is they are a sixth dimensional, fourth to fifth dimensity, uh, density race of beings. The Syrians are, in general, benevolent aliens. Um, well, they're actually fourth to six dimensional beings. Okay, uh, right. Uh, many Syrians are deeply wise. And here is an image of, they. some are blue beings and some are, you know, uh, look more like humans. Uh, there's a wide diversity of beings there. They also have lion beings, but they're deeply wise, conscious, spiritual, and loving, empathic people, though they are much more evolved technolo technologically and spiritually than us. They have a capacity for deep love that manifests as a commitment to service. Many are healers, and there's many nurses that are from Sirius. Sirius has a direct link with our solar system as some of the planets in its star system come very, very close to our star system, our solar system. And the Syrians have been among us since the time of the Mayan and Egyptian civilizations. And so here we go. Whenever you see pyramids, you know that the Syrians have been around. They are the pyramid builders. They gave the Egyptians much advanced astronomical and medical information and also gave the Mayan race advanced knowledge. 
They helped Earth during the time of the cataclysmic period in Atlantis. The Syrians helped to build the pyramids and the temples of Egypt. And, uh, and there are pyramids all over the world. I mean, they're finding pyramids in, it, in um, I mean, everywhere. Of course, in Antarctica, there was the one. And of course, like there's some in Serbia, Bosnia, uh, that part of the world. Um, trying to think, I just saw another one that was just recently uncovered. I don't remember where that was. Uh, they also finding them, of course, under the ocean. Pyramids are everywhere, okay? Um, and the Syrians have been some of our primary teachers to help us remember who we are. And of course, this is an image of, you know, uh, this, we, we believe it's the star of Sirius here in the, um, the temple, or no, this is the sun. Of course, this is the sun here in with the hieroglyphs in one of the temples here in Egypt. And this is, of course, a Mayan pyramid and the pyramids on Giza. All right. Okay, so um, let's see here. Looks like I got my stuff out of order just a little bit. Well, let's just talk about this. We didn't really talk about this, but this is the... Um, I forgot to mention it when we looked at the chart. This is the, um, the sun and the moon. The new moon is square the nodes of the moon. And of course the nodes of the moon, they're in Aries and Libra. And so Aries is the way forward. And I really liked this quote. You can never cross the ocean until you have the courage to lose sight of the shore. All right. Here we go. This is what I thought came next, but it didn't. And here it is right here. Here's the, uh, the, the new moon, which is square the nodes. Yeah, so I thought that was a really good quote for that. But what I wanted to talk about here, we really go deeply into the Star of David aspect here, these two interlocking triangles. Um, and of course, we have all of the symbolism of the divine feminine in this chart. We've got the moon, we've got Venus, we've got uh, Juno, we've got Pallas Athena, we've got Ceres, okay? All of the asteroids except one is involved and that's Vesta. So it, I feel like this chart is so much about the, the divine feminine uh, and the activation of the power of the divine feminine, especially in the form of Kundalini as part of the creative process. I feel like we've been getting so much guidance around creativity. And I'm gonna bring the Syrians back in because they're here to help us. But I wanna talk just a little more about the astrology. Um, and so the Kundalini is life force, but it is activated from the heart. The female and male energy weave their energies up the spine for enlightenment, just like the flower of life to create. Once again, it is the inner weaving of the masculine and feminine that creates. And the kundalini is activated by the frequency of love. Now, this grand trine, as I was talking about, of course, I'll talk just a little bit here, uh, maybe about some of the components of this um, these two grand trines, which actually makes a Merkaba. So in it, of course, we've got Pallas Athena here in Scorpio, which she brings great insight, okay? A Saturn in Pisces, to me, a lot is a piece, is about surrender. And the sun and moon in Cancer conjunct Sirius is about love. You know, it's about deep insight and surrender, um, as well as the ability to gain new perspectives with that deep insight. Okay, and then the second one, we've got Mars, and where are we at here? Let's start over here. We've got uh, Juno in Virgo, trying Ceres in Capricorn. You know, Ceres is the great mother. Uh, she, she and Mars are both about mother, about matter and practicality. Yeah, all of these are, these are earth signs. They're all three about practicality. All right, so anyway, but the um, this is, creates what's called a Merkaba, okay? Let me see if we've got this next. Here we go. Here are some images of a Merkaba, okay? 
So what happens is, you know, when it's on a 2D page, it just looks like two intersecting triangles. Once it comes into 3D, it becomes what's called a tetrahedron or a Merkaba. And it represents the interconnectedness of the spiritual and physical realms. Um, as serving as a vehicle for spiritual evolution, spirit coming into matter, a combination, once again, of masculine and feminine, the light being masculine, feminine being matter. And so um, as you can see here, this is a being, this is a person in the midst of the Merkaba. Okay. And what, and, and the goal, many, many of you I'm sure are really familiar with the Merkaba and that how it is used as a vehicle for consciousness travel, for expanding our travel. And Drun Velo Melchizedek came in and brought a lot of information about how to work with a Merkaba. Uh, it's also known as the light body or chariot. Some believe it enables individuals to transcend their physical limitation and access higher realms of consciousness. So I feel like that is one of the big teachings of this uh, Cancer New Moon. It is, it is, um, uh, it's about the expansion of consciousness of Mother Earth because it's, this is surrounding Mother Earth and each of us are in that. And it's also an opening for higher dimensional beings to come in. Uh, as you can see here, these may be Syrians back here because Syrians are the ones who really have brought in the concept of the Merkaba and using the Merkaba for consciousness growth. Uh, the light body of the earth being activated with higher frequencies as part of the creation process because it takes the masculine and the feminine energies. And the thing is, you know, the Merkaba, the, the top spins one way and a, the bottom spins the other way. And that is the way um, those who work with the Merkaba uh, use it for consciousness travel. And to know that this is really strongly in our field. And I feel like with this Merkaba, the Syrians are coming in. The Syrian masters are coming in with their light codes and they are helping us create the new world that we are. They are helping us create the new world. Now, the thing is, is that there are two components. This is the light component. Okay. This is the form and structure and the light. The, uh, the vibrational component belongs to us. This is what we have to do. And so this is what I feel like. This is the other piece of the energy. Okay. Well, let me look at this. All right. So here is the flower of life inside the Merkaba here around mother earth. So this is another image here. I hope that uh, makes some sense to you to know this is going on. Even if you're not conscious or aware of it, there are beings here that are helping us um, move out of this 3D reality into a, uh, a fifth dimensional reality and a fourth density. And um, yes, yeah, so we're not doing this alone. All right. Now. Here's the work <laughs> that we have to do because, of course, we have to continue clearing our field. All right. So what is going on in the field as well? So we have Mars conjunct Uranus. I think I forgot to show you that in the chart. That's a really big one. Uh, Mars is at 19 degrees of Taurus. Uranus is at 25 degrees. So it's uh, it's a little wide at the actual new moon, but it's going to come into play. It's going to be exact on July 15th, and they're going to be just minutes off the exact conjunction of the star Algol. So first off, let's just talk about Mars and Uranus. All right. So Mars Uranus energy is very volatile. Mars is a catalyst and Uranus brings unexpected changes and breakthroughs but it's very difficult energy to manage. It's very impulsive. It's kind of like anything can happen. Um, it's difficult to get a handle on. And on top of that, it's conjunct the star Algol, A-L-G-O-L, -L, if you're not familiar with that star. And this star is known as the demon star as it represents the head of Medusa. Okay, and here we go. Here is Medusa. We know that uh, she... Um, she had a head full of snakes. Uh, 
And they say that she could turn men to stone just by looking at them. And to me, of course, what this represents, I feel like they say that before the Greeks, the star Algol was not considered a demon star, but it was a star, like I said, that they, the Greeks changed the meaning and to represent Medusa. And Medusa, what she actually, her story came along around the time of the patriarchal shift. And uh, the snakes represent actually the kundalini life force energy, the Shakti. It is actually the story of the usurping of the power in the patriarchal shift that rep repressed the feminine power. The feminine power of sexuality, the sacred sexual priestesses, they were demonized. And Medusa was also the crone. The power or represented the crone, the power of the elder women in more matriarchal cultures, those wise beings that helped guide their communities through their visions and their connections to the other side. And they were the ones who would not participate with this patriarchal shift and would give those that were doing it, which were men, of course, uh, the, uh, you know, the look, you know, that look when, um, you know, things aren't right when, when, you know, when you're just not kind of roll your eyes or whatever the look is, that was really what, and this was kind of, I think the origin of the evil eye uh, there in the Mediterranean. Um, so I feel like with Uranus, well, first off Mars and then um, Mars and, and then and Uranus both activating this. And Uranus is going to be activating this star for the next um, 18 months. So it's really um, a very powerful activation. So I feel like it's about the healing and releasing of this old paradigm, reclaiming the power of the divine feminine life force energy, because this is really what we need to be able to create the new world is the activation, the new earth that we want to create. The Kundalini life force is a big part of that creative process. And so it's really reclaiming the power and the sacredness of our sexuality for both men and women, but, but uh, especially women, and also the kundalini of the life force energy, okay? Uh, like I said, here's Medusa, and here there is a, um, if you're familiar with Alberto Violdo and the Four Winds, uh, he had a video once, it was called what was it the galactic serpent? And he talked about how the kundalini of the earth had um, been in the Himalayas for like the last 5,000 years. It had been over there in Asia. Now it is in the Amer Americas and it is a much more feminine kind of an activation. And it is, there's seven different mountains that come up um, the West coast of uh, South America, and Mexico and then North America. And let's see there, the, and the, they say, you know, the, the sleeping serpent lies in the, um, what was it? It was a mountain at the southernmost tip of um, Chile. And there was an earthquake there right in that area. And then the, so that would be the first chakra. The second chakra is, uh, I think it's a mountain a little further up in Chile. Then the third chakra is a mountain in Peru. The fourth chakra is in Mexico. The fifth chakra is Mount Shasta here in the United States. The sixth chakra is in Canada. I can't remember where. And then the seventh chakra is Denali in uh, Alaska. And now uh, other people have different chakra systems for Mother Earth, but this is the one he shared. And I really liked it because it is, I feel like that's what this is, that there is an awakening as well. Uh, the uh, life force of Mother Earth as we are creating this new reality. But as a part of it, if the activation of the, the uh, Kundalini of Mother Earth, we could have some um, severe weather, storms, earthquakes, you know, things like that, -ish, you know. Um, so, but it's also one more story too. So we have the story of Medusa, 
related to Algol. There is another story related to Algol. And this story comes from the um, uh, Stellar Nation Soul Family Cosmology. And they say that Algol is the place where the battle between the angels took place and the fallen angels, okay? And this is where, so if you have this in your chart, uh, it could indicate that you may have been part of this battle. But to me, you know, the, it is represented as the uh, angel, the rebellious angels who no longer wanted to follow the will of God. And to me, what it actually represents more, it is beings, angels, who chose, who wanted to, who descended into matter to have the experience of free will and the karma that comes with it. And so I feel like both of these paradigms need to be healed right now. It is time for self-forgiveness and release of any shame. I think this is related to original sin. Uh, that is part of the teachings of many religions. And so to realize that, th that he the only healing that can happen is through love. It is the love of the divine mother and self-love as we align with the love that is pouring through Sirius to allow us to release some of these old stories that are in our collective consciousness that are no longer um, relevant that, you know, the, oh Lord, I am not worthy, um, needs to go out the window because it's not true. Humbleness and humility is important, but not the um, uh, shame. And so, because we are moving into a time of embodied spirituality, where we claim the sacredness of our bodies and release the shame. And that is how we love our bodies and activate the kundalini life force that is wanting to happen. And of course, mother is another word for matter. Matter is the divine mother's gift to us. She does rule everything that has matter. Um, and so that's what I feel like that story was about. It was a free will choice to grow the greater reality. And with the hope that we will freely choose to align with divine will and divine will is actually our soul plan. All right. But in this process, it's, we're in a time of big paradigm busting as we release these old stories and myths in our subconscious uh, and is bringing chaos in the process of this paradigm busting. And Uranus always brings chaos. Uranus is out of the chaos, new life is born. Um, and it's just like, you know, how sometimes you have to cut down the plant for it to really grow again. It has to be pruned. Uh, it's about renewal of the life force, but to know that a breakthrough is coming. And I really liked this image because it may feel like a lot of chaos, but there is light at the center. Know that it is coming to follow the energy. And what seems like a loss may take you exactly where you need to be. And I do want to just share one more thing is that um, the Republican National Convention is going to be on, starting on um, the 15th of, um, of July 15th, the day of the exact Uranus mars conjunction so just expect chaos there and as i said they or as what i wanted to say was they apparently they obviously did not consult an astrologer or they would not have chosen this day we'll see what happens anyway all right so all right the next thing that's going on is we've got a mercury pluto opposition i don't think i showed you that either anyway uh, Mercury, Mercury is in Leo and, uh, it's opposite, uh, Pluto in Aquarius. So Mercury and Leo can be lively, entertaining, good speaker and opinionated, but the shadow side of Mercury and Leo is that it can be very dogmatic, uh, a relatively unchangeable, unjustified certainty in one's beliefs. Pluto is the God of death and rebirth who's challenging our deeply held beliefs as it is our thoughts and beliefs that are creating this world. It is about transforming the collective consciousness. 
And we change the collective consciousness by healing our thoughts, releasing that dogmatism or blind loyalty to old ways of thinking and being. Might We might find it painful to let go of old ways of perceiving the world, and yet it is necessary to create the world we want. Okay, all right. So we also have Saturn and Neptune, both retrograde in Pisces. And so um, Saturn in Pisces um, is where he goes back over old territory to get new perspectives. Saturn events often bring a reality check. A shadow of Neptune ruled Pisces is illusion and self-delusion, where we allow ourselves to believe what we want to believe. The veil of deceit and self-delusion is being lifted. We cannot, I'm just going to say, we've seen some things lately. This is on a personal level, but you know, this is also on a collective level. We have here in the United, here we have just seen some things that we cannot unsee. What we have been shown, the truth. What we are faced with is a reality, reality check of what is really true so that we can make choices that are in our highest good and the highest good of all. I want to compare it to the, the, here in the Wizard of Oz when the curtain is pulled back and you can really see who the wizard is, that the wizard is just a man. So there are some things in our world where the veil is being pulled back. But also, I think it's even bigger than that. We are releasing the illusion of separation and stepping into unity consciousness. And that's what this symbol is. This is Neptune retrograde. You know, Neptune is in Pisces right now. as uh, the 29th degree of Pisces, the last degree. Um, Neptune is going to be there uh, through most of next year. And it's going to go into Aries in um, 20, what well, part, the tail end of 2026, excuse me. Going to go there for a few months in 2025 and then re enter Aries in 2026, where it then conjuncts Saturn. And um, so I feel like, so Neptune in Pisces, I believe this will be the last time that we will experience Neptune in Pisces where we still have one foot in the age of Pisces. The next time it comes around, we will be fully in the age of Aquarius, which is 144 years from now. And the 29th degree is the last degree. So the teachings of the age of Pisces are really, really strong now. And I feel like one of the things that is teaching us is that it's about unity consciousness. It is also, I, I've been saying this quote, I'm gonna say it again, is that Saturn is the illusion that there is one reality. Neptune is the reality there are many. So it is several teachings here. It, it is recognizing that we are each living in our own reality on many levels because we each have our own perspective. But some of the other teaching is that we, we are not separate from source. It is remembering who we are and that we are not separate from source or each other. At some level, we are all one. And Neptune in Pisces is leading us into the unconditional love of the universe, remembering who we are and leading us into that place of unity consciousness. All right. And then one last one. Okay. So we've got here. So we also have Jupiter. Jupiter is at nine degrees of um, Gemini. And nine degrees of Gemini is conjunct the star Aldebaran. Aldebaran is a royal star of Persia. It has to do with integrity and it is connected to St. Michael. And here we have Archangel Michael with his sword of truth. He is a protector uh, to know that the angels are close by and St. Michael is here to protect us during this shift that we can call upon him at any time. And it may seem, and here is Mother Isis again, the Divine Mother. She is here. And this, I feel, is an image of the Syrian masters with their light codes that are here helping us create this new world. It may seem like the world is in chaos because it is still in breakdown, it's in the breakdown stage, but breakthroughs are coming. 
We have forces beyond ourselves here now to help with the creation of the new earth. We are not alone. It is up to us to carry the vibrational frequency of love. And the Syrian masters are here to help bring the new template for Mother Earth and humanity into being. The Divine Mother is always here to hold and protect us. All you have to do is ask. Know that our prayers are always answered and heard. Open your heart to love. Love heals everything. All right. So I hope you enjoyed that and maybe feel a little better now. I know the world is in chaos, but we are not alone. They're coming from all over the universe. Um, and I feel like this Merkaba that is being created is really allowing the Syrian masters to come in and help us with this process like they have done for other. They have done this for Atlantis. They did this for Lemuria, for Egypt. And, you know, they say that um, the new Atlantis is coming and that it is coming here in North America. And of course, we obviously need a really big transformation for that to happen. But we, this is the plan. And St. Germain is here, the Ascended Masters. We are getting lots of help. Um, so, you know, stay centered, uh, love yourself, um, and surrender to the process. Trust the process and know that we will make it to the other side. All right, many blessings to all, namaste. And if you like this video, please check like and subscribe. And if you're interested in reading, all my information is in the description box. All right, blessings to all.